It's chemistry and you are watching Cam Science. In this video, we'll be discussing paper 5 of A-level chemistry of the year summer 22, that is question paper 5-2. In our earlier video, we have already seen question 1 of the same year and same paper. In this video, we'll be discussing question 2. Along with that, we'll also discuss what are the variables, what are the measurements we should take care while planning and analyzing such experiments and what are the errors and accuracies and how graphs, gradients and conclusions can be done in paper 5. So let's start with question 2 directly where it says that in a neutral solution aqueous potassium iodide acts as a catalyst for the decomposition of aqueous hydrogen peroxide and here is the equation given where potassium iodide is acting as a catalyst. Now I'll be just summarizing the question in short where it says that a student plans a to carry out an investigation to find out how temperature affects the initial rate of decomposition of aqueous potassium peroxide in presence of aqueous potassium iodide and the student knows that the initial rate of reaction can be measured by timing the production of the oxygen and in experiment 1 the student knows the temperature of hydrogen peroxide and Ki under room conditions and in experiments 2 to 8 the solutions are heated to different temperatures before mixing and the measurements of oxygen produced. So this is a summary you can always pause the video and read the whole question in detail and try to understand each and every step because that is necessary before you answer all the sub questions. The data collected is used to determine the value of activation energy for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide in presence of potassium iodide Ki. Now let's go ahead with the sub questions. Uh, state the independent variable. So what are we changing in this experiment? We are changing the temperature and measuring the volume of oxygen so independent variable is what we are changing during the experiment so temperature is the independent variable that is the factor which we change factor to be changed is called an independent variable so here what is changing is temperature state two variables that needs to be controlled that is what are the factors which we keep same factors to be kept same now if we are planning different experiments at different temperature so what are the other things which we should keep same to make the experiment more accurate so there are many other factors but here we are supposed to state only two variables so i would say that concentration of hydrogen peroxide should be kept the same concentration of hydrogen peroxide and also the volume of hydrogen peroxide volume of hydrogen peroxide other than that what are the other temp uh, things which we are using is potassium iodide so concentration and volume of potassium iodide should also be kept sa same so out of all these four factors we can write any two here because it says that state two variables now what is the next question next question says state how the student should prepare 250 centimeter cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide from 0 0.50 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide now this is preparation of solution preparation of solution is a very important factor in paper 5 and let's learn how to do that Let's go ahead with the next part of the question. It says calculate the minimum volume of 0 0.50 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide required for the preparation of 0 0.1 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide. Give the name and capacity of any key apparatus which should be used. Now what are we supposed to do is the volume is 250 centimeter cube that we should keep in mind and we have 0.5 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide which we are diluting to 0.1 mole per dm cube so what are we supposed to do how are we supposed to do that is what we are supposed to calculate so to what factor are we diluting 0.50 mole 
to 0 0.10 mole so we are diluting it by the factor of 5 that is very important to find out now how did we find out that we are going to divide the concentration by the other concentration that is 0 0.5 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide to 0 0.1 mole per dm cube so answer is 5 times we are diluting now we are diluting this into what volume we are diluting this into 250 centimeter cube volume now to this volume if we are making the solution then and if we want to dilute it five times then what are we supposed to do again divide 250 centimeter cube by five so that we know that what is the minimum volume which we should use and dilute it to 250 so if we divide this we get an answer equal to 50 centimeter cube if we want to show the calculation here we can write it here also or we can write it directly because here it says write your answer as a series of number of steps which we are supposed to perform so calculation is not needed here but if we want to write we have enough space to write we can write it here so i am writing it directly we can perform this calculation into a rough portion so i'll say that take 50 centimeter cube of hydrogen peroxide of 0 0.5 mole per dm cube now again what is the question read reread it he give the name and capacity of any key apparatus which should be used now if we are using 50 centimeter cube we should mention that what apparatus are we using to measure it so we can say that take 50 centimeter cube of hydrogen peroxide of 0.45 mole per dm cube with the help of burette with the help of burette or we can even write with the help of pipette with the help of burette and transfer it in transfer it transfer it means transfer the solution in 250 centimeter cube of volumetric pipette volumetric flask i'll say volumetric flask because volumetric flask is the apparatus which is used to prepare the solution of a given dilution or a given concentration so we are transferring 50 centimeter cube of hydrogen peroxide given hydrogen peroxide with the help of burette into volumetric flask now next what step is dilute it dilute the solution dilute the solution up to mark now there are always some marks given in the volumetric flask so dilute up to the marks with the help of distilled water now that is also important we need to write mention distilled water with the help of distilled water with the help of distilled water each and everything should be specified that is very important part here so we are uh, mentioning the capacity of the burette the volumetric flask here it says series of steps so if we are writing it in a point wise that is also acceptable here i'm writing it in a paragraph form that is also acceptable dilute the solution up to the mark with the help of distilled water and shake well that are the steps which we perform now the most important part is the calculation of 50 centimeter cube now again i'll repeat what are the steps find out to what factor are we diluting the solution we are diluting it with the five times okay find out to what dilution we are using the volume what volume capacity we are using for the volumetric flask so if we are using 250 divide 250 by factor of 5 to find out the minimum volume and then answer that volume in your question so that is how we are find, using uh, we are calculating the minimum volume for a given dilution of a solution so these are the steps which are required for a three mark question next step says hydrogen peroxide 
hydrogen peroxide causes eye and skin irritation state what precautions should be taken when preparing the solution in c1 other than wearing goggles now that goggles is for the eye protection but now skin irritation is still left so what are we supposed to use to avoid the skin irritation to avoid contact with skin we can use always the gloves but it's if possible always be specific that wear chemical resistant gloves that is important chemical resistant gloves because all the gloves are not chemical resistant so wear chemical resistant gloves that is important here that shows that this gloves are not affected by any type of the chemicals now here a student performs experiment 1 to 8 using a range of temperatures the results are shown in table 2.1 complete the table and record the value of 1 by 2 to 3 significant figures and the values of log of initial rate to 3 significant figures now here is the table where all the data are given and we are supposed to complete the table so let's complete the whole table i'm just you can always pause and have a look i'll complete the table within few seconds Now here I have completed the table by keeping all the values. Now the first column is what one upon t per Kelvin it is. So here the earlier temperature was given in degree Celsius and then it was converted into Kelvin. So if we are supposed to calculate one by t, we are supposed to divide these values by one. So one divided by two ninety three. So that is how we are going to calculate the first column about one upon t, and then the in initial rate values are given we are supposed to calculate the log for it and that is also done and i have given the values to three significant figures now here if we are suppose writing these values into 10 power something that is also acceptable like 3.41 into 10 power minus 3 that is also acceptable here but i have preferred writing it directly in decimal zeros because three significant figures are mentioned so after zeros there should be three digits should be given fully now here i'll mention one more point that in the reading third third reading we our answer is 330 so might be the value of zero is not important here but still we will write 330 because we are supposed to write in three significant figures so after the decimal zeros we are supposed to write three numbers fully whether it's zero or not because that also carries marks and that is important so you can always pause the video and have a look at how the values are calculated you can check it with your calculator values let's go ahead with the next part it says that plot a graph on the grid to show the relationship between log initial rate 1 by t and use a cross to plot each data point draw a line of best fit circle the point on the graph you consider to be most anomalous and suggest one reason why this anomaly may have occurred during this experimental procedure now that can be done only when we plot the graph so let's plot the graph here we can see that the graph grid is also given with the values also written on the x axis and y axis now in this question paper our work is made easy otherwise at times we are supposed to give the label and give the values to the x axis and y axis suppose if we are supposed to do that we are supposed to label and number the axis remember that grid should be covered more than half grid should be covered more than half in such a way we are supposed to choose our units and choose our scale so should be covered more than half the grid we are supposed to choose our scale in such a way now that is very important remember this point if we are not given such values on x axis and y axis again i'll pause and i'll plot the graph and i'll show you how to plot it 
and let's draw a line of best fit then now here i have plotted the graph with the help of crosses on the grid with 1 by t value and the log values so here i have plotted and let's draw a line of best fit now and here is our best fit line which is connecting most of the points other than this one point so we are circling this one point because according to the question it says that circle the anomaly point here it's written in part 3 circle the point on the graph you consider to be anomalous so this is how we are circle and it's also written give one reason why this anomaly may have occurred during this experiment now what we can find out it from this is that the log values is higher than the expected value it should be somewhere near minus 4.8 but it's more than that so that shows that the value of log should be lower or you can say that the value of 1 upon t which is on x axis here 1 upon t should be greater so if 1 upon t should be greater the t is actually lower that shows that temperature should have been lower but the temperature is recorded higher than expected so one of the reason what we can write here is that the temperature recorded the temperature recorded is higher the temperature recorded is higher than the actual temperature higher than the actual temperature that may be the reason so that is the reason for anomaly so if we are wa wanting to find out the reason for the anomalies have a look that our point should be greater or lower than the actual and then find out the reason accordingly so the next part of the question says determine the gradient of your line of best fit state the coordinates of both the points you used in your calculation and this must be selected from your line of best fit give the gradient to three significant figures so let's have a look at the gradient and find out two points which can be used to find out the gradient let's choose some two points which are farther so i'm circling it here but you are not supposed to circle it here so i'm finding out exactly two points which are lying on the line exactly that is the third last point and the second point so if we note down the coordinates let's note down that coordinate on our blanks the first coordinate for the point is zero point 0, 0, 0,003 0 0.00313 on x axis and on y axis is minus 4.43 yes it's minus 4.43 and if we choose another coordinate it's 0 0.003 36 and the next point is minus on the y axis is minus 5.10 so i've written how to calculate the gradient that is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 and the value will be 2910 kelvin so let's write it here 2910 kelvin actually the value was 2913 point something but as we are supposed to write it in three significant figures i've removed that three out so it's 2910 one zero Calvin and it carries two marks if we are calculated the gradient correctly it's this value of Calvin will give you two marks now let's go ahead with the next sub question it says that the relationship between the log initial rate and one upon t is given by this expression log initial rate is equal to constant minus ea upon 2.303 rt use the gradient calculated in d1 by d1 fourth to calculate a value of activation energy ea if you are unable to ob obtain an answer to d4 you may use the value as 3100 kelvin this is not the correct value now let's go and check that how are we supposed to use the gradient in this equation now our gradient was the value of 
log of initial rate that was in our x axis log of initial rate log of initial rate divide by upon 1 upon t value now if we have a look here in this equation it says that log initial rate is used here and the constant is here and r by t value is here so if we take this here that is the t value on this side and calculate ea if we rearrange ea how are we supposed to calculate the ea let's write it here suppose if i write ea here ea then it's equal to log of initial rate log of initial rate rearrange the equation log of initial rate minus constant divide full value by sorry you know division it should be in multiplication multiply the whole value by 2.303 into r t now if we take t into denominator we get it 1 by t here okay now in this equation if we rearrange we are supposed to omit this constant because that is a part which doesn't make any difference in our equation now here if we are noted it was minus ea so if we use that minus value here we are supposed to use this negative value here negative ea is equal to this value so minus 1 upon t sorry we are removing this t from here and we are adding t here in the denominator so log initial rate divided by our 1 upon t value that's what we have calculated here in the gradient log initial rate upon 1 by t value multiplied by 2.303 into r that's how we are supposed to calculate the activation energy so again if i write a rearrange type minus ea activation energy will be equal to our gradient gradient into 2.303 into r value right so here why because i'll let's uh, i'll explain again if we omit out our constant we are removing this value out if we have a look at this value log of initial rate divided by 1 upon t value then that is our gradient that gradient multiplied by 2.303 into r that is the uh, equation we are supposed to use so our gradient value is 2910 multiplied by 2.303 and substituting the value of r it is 8.31 so this is how we are supposed to calculate the activation energy then we get the answer as 55,000 55, something but here we are supposed to write it in kilojoules per mole so if we convert that into kilojoules because our value will be in joules here so if we convert that into kilojoules per mole then we are supposed to divide it by thousand so we get answer as 55.7 if we change it into three significant figures so 55.7 kilojoules per mole this is the value we will be getting for activation energy okay now next part is it is not possible to repeat the investigation state whether the data from the investigation is reliable justify your answer now if we have a look this is the last part of the sub question so what i'll write here is that if it is not possible for the investigation and is the data reliable i will say no because there is an anomalous point there is an anomalous reading also you can say that anomalous reading so all the data is not reliable so we can we cannot fully rely on all this data so this is how we are supposed to write so in this video what have we learned we have learned what are the variables that is independent variable and dependent variable independent variable is the one which we change the factor changing factor is the independent variable 
and the same factors factors which are same that are the uh, controlled factors if suppose they ask what is a dependent variable then dependent variable is the one which we measure what measurement have we taken if we are measuring the rate of reaction with the help of the time that is the dependent variable so what is the independent variable the variable which we are changing dependent variable is the one which we are measuring and the factors which we keep same they are the controlled factors okay then we have seen how to plot the graph how to find out the anomalous of the readings what is what can be the reason for the anomalous then calculate the gradient of this plot and use the gradient in the calculation so always remember the way a equation is given here one of the equation is given here we have to rearrange this equation in such a way to get our gradients um, units so that we can use the gradient directly to calculate one of the point which we have asked so whatever here suppose if we are supposed to calculate activation energy rearrange and use your gradient find out where can we use the gradient and then use it to calculate the given unit given specific substance then always this question is also commonly asked that how to repeat the investigation whether the data or the readings are reliable or not suppose if we get a very straight line without an anomalous then definitely you can say that yes the data are reliable it can be used because we have got a straight line or a specific curved line but here we had an anomalous so we say that no the data is not reliable so this is how we have completed our summer 22 Question 2 also and question 1 was discussed in our earlier video.